Good afternoon. My name is Monica Consego Guta. Welcome to Salve TV. I am here with my good friend, Lori Chenger, and we are going to be talking about how parents are affected by um, the relationships that they witness their children going through, their adult children going through when they uh, have their spouses or partners or whatever you may call it. Welcome, Lori. I will uh, give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and to, to tell our audience who you are and what you do. Okay, hello. Um, I'm really um, looking forward to today's conversation. I think it's something that we need to start a voice with. I'm a certified hypnotherapist, a dementia specialist. I'm an international best-selling author and a motivational speaker. And I'm a parent. Yes, that's the main part. <laughs> yeah. You being a parent. <laughs> yeah, of adult children. Yes, uh, <laughs> so we will also have an opportunity to respond to any questions that um, our audience will be asking us. Of, oftentimes we hear people talk about domestic abuse um, between men and women, and it's usually when people are so worried about women being abused. And lately we, it's becoming more and more apparent that men are being abused as well. So a couple of... Um, Days ago, I posted something about uh, she's in a relationship and it's affecting her children. And right. Lori responded that maybe we could look at she's in a bad relationship and it's affecting her parents, her parents. And I thought, oh, wow, this is something that we don't normally talk about. Why do you think? it hasn't been addressed because I don't remember coming across um, people talking about how parents are affected when their children are in, adult children are in toxic relationships. Right, and we do tend to just look at the abuse between the genders, but what we have to, I think, be cognizant about is that abuse doesn't have any specific gender or age, right? So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not just um, men against women. It's, you know, men towards men, women towards women, women towards men. And then we have our adult children in there. And we tend to kind of as a society say, well, they're adults, um, you know, they can deal with it. But you know, hey, as a parent, you don't want to be told that. Well, you're an adult, just deal with it, right? So mm -hmm. why would we give the same information or the same message to our children, right? Mm -hmm. And so we really do have to look at, you know, society's views and how that plays such a big part on how we're communicating with our children. And what can we do to be, um, you know, educating them? Because, you know, we spend so much time on, you know, having our children, you know, as they're young, saying, well, you have to respect, you have to say please and thank you. And we talk about, you know, one day you're going to be in a relationship, but we don't really tell them what that means. And sometimes mm -hmm. as adults, we stop looking at what that means. We get so busy in our day-to-day -day lives that we forget about the number one thing, and that's the person that is with you. Right. I came across as a statement, uh, someone saying, I'm looking after my daughter well so that she can be the best spouse for you. And another one was saying, uh, parents making sure that the way they are raising their sons is to ensure that they become good partners when they get married, but or, or even when they are in a relationship, whether it's marriage or just boyfriend and girlfriends. Right. Um, so 
is is this something that you have come across? Well, I have in in like in my own life with my adult children, and then I have friends who have you know adult children that are in unhealthy relationships or toxic relationships, and whether that is with a substance or another person, um, mm -hmm. it really makes you stop and think. Okay, maybe I didn't quite you know, impart the right wisdom that I needed to, right? Mm. Um, and it's really about having a conversation and changing the, the words that we use. Um, for example, one of the words that I really dislike to hear um, in regards to men and when we're raising our young boys is when we refer to them as being a mommy's boy, a mama's boy. Right. Okay? And I hear this a lot with, um, you know, young boys as they're growing up. I know, like for myself, I raised my um, children as a single parent. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of male role models around. And I would often hear that kind of message um, being given to my children, right? Especially my son. Oh, well, he's just a mama's boy. And it's like, well, wait a minute what what kind of message and how does that feel what does that interpretation mm -hmm. feel like within the mind and the spirit of a young boy right and so we're giving a mixed message like to me mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful experience as a young man to be able to grow up with two females so my other child is is, uh, is a female so i have a, a daughter and a son um, and so if, you know, if they're taught to be kind mm -hmm. and caring and emotional and they recognize that um, mom is the adult figure and, you know, the, the caretaker, the breadwinner, um, all those kinds of things in the house. And I respect mom. Why is it that we have to say to a young male that, well, you're a mama's boy? You always have to do what mom says and you know you're being respectful but we don't hold that same language to a girl do we and so i feel that this pattern can easily lead a young boy into a relationship with somebody else with another female who could be emotionally abusive because now at a young age, right, I'm growing up, so let's say I'm a teenager and I'm a teenage male and I hear, don't be a mama's boy. Well, I don't really know what that means, but I know it doesn't feel good, right? And so then I go the opposite and I try to be like a guy, right? Whatever the male role models around. So does that mean I'm not supposed to care and I, you know, shouldn't really listen? And so then I enter into a relationship having no idea what the emotional boundaries are and how I am supposed to influence and act with a female partner. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So being called a mama's boy is coming across as a negative uh, statement. And it doesn't really make sense, really, especially if the, the young man has only ever known that the person who's my my caregiver, my provider is my mom. Why is it so wrong that he will be close to his mom? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, they're, they learn how to respect females, right? They're with women who um, are more easily um, in touch with their emotions. And I think that's a wonderful gift to impart on a young man as we're raising young men to grow up in this world. Um, I also think though, we do have to, because um, men can, you know, young boys raised in a single parent household, or, you know, I'm just using single parent because that's my frame of reference, but you right. can still be really connected to your mom if you have, a male father in the figure in the house as well, right? Mm -hmm. But when it's just women and a man in a house, a young boy that I'm referring to, 
we do still need to be able to show, teach, and explain what is a boundary. Because now it becomes so natural for a young male to um, care, to sit and listen, that they don't understand now when they're being taken advantage of. When are they supposed to show a little bit of power in a positive way? Does that make sense? It does make sense. So from, from what you have witnessed, what do you think would be the best approach when you witness that um, my son or my daughter is in a toxic relationship? Um, I think it's really about pointing out that you have a, you have a right um, as a male and, you know, as a human being to be able to um, respectfully have your own feelings, mm -hmm. right? And to say, well, that's a good idea, but this is what I think, instead of just like, well, okay, we'll do that, we'll do that. And, you know, they just want to care so much and show that they know how to care, that they kind of give themselves away. Right. And then that opens up a toxic relationship to be present. Right. So in your in your experience, how have you have you, how have you dealt with a situation like that? Well, I tend to do um, I guess it's partly because of, of my background and my training, and I am very fortunate that I did get to spend a lot of time with my children uh, and it was just me. So there wasn't um, uh, an, an ex in the picture that, you know, that my children had to spend time with and go back and forth with. So it was just my values that were passed right. on. And we build a bond that way in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. When it's a mom taking care of two um, children. And we tend to, as single parents, I believe, put more pressure to, um, to conform and to not have people judge and to always do the right thing because we're already being devalued a little bit by, right. um, by society by saying, well, you know, they're from a single parent home. And why does that have to translate into a negative? Right. Right? And so I spend a lot of time um, talking to my kids. And when I hear um, sentences or messages from them that gives me an insight into what they're thinking about from their past, I can change it. And I sit and I have that conversation with them, mm -hmm. right? So for example, my son had told me once that, um, and he was upset, and I can't remember the specific situation that prompted him to have this comment, but he had he was upset with something. He was in a relationship that wasn't going the best, and he had said, um, well, my dad left me. And I could tell at, at that moment that he had carried that thought for a long mm. period of time of being left. Right. And then I noticed the the patterns in his previous relationships that women had left him. Okay. Right. And so he translated that into being, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. And so then when another relationship came around, he tried too hard to prove that he was to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a relationship with yourself and have that be healthy before you can ever expect to draw into, um, to draw a healthy relationship into your life. Right. Um, I'm thinking, so how, how do the parents get the, 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 the protection? Because it does affect them emotionally too, what the yeah. adult children are going through, and especially when they are failing to get through to them sitting down with them and helping them see the situation or assess situation for themselves? 
Well, it, it takes a lot of being able to explain the contrast and, and to be able to say, you know, I understand that you don't like that he's left you, but if that's all that you can focus on is the leaving, then where are you at in your sense of who you are? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like the person that has left and all you do is focus on that, you can't see the gifts that are left, the good things in your life and the good ways that you respond. And does if a person leaves, it doesn't necessarily mean that you weren't worthy. There's a lot of reasons why that partner might have gone on. Maybe they weren't ready. Maybe um, they had different expectations. Maybe they were afraid. Maybe you weren't the right person for them at the, at the right time. So it's always, even as adult children, having them understand that, that conversation, right? Because as adults, we tend to go back to our childhood memories. But what we do when we go back is we go back to that age. We right. don't stay as the adult and go, oh, well, you know, I'm a 37 year man now. And I need to look at that situation from the perspective of a 37 year old man and not from a 10 year old or an eight year old or whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it plays a huge part on the parents um, when you're watching your children go through unhealthy relationships. Right. And whether again, like I say, whether that relationship is an unhealthy relationship with a substance Mm -hmm. or with a partner, um, it, it plays a lot of mind games, right? right? And so then the parent will start thinking like, well, you know, what can I do? Um, they're not going to like this. And, and what happens is we start owning their emotions without really doing a check-in to see, is that really their emotion that you're owning or are you feeling all of your past pain from watching your children grow up and, and watching them experience specific situations. So it's really about sitting down with yourself too as a parent and, and really defining those boundaries that you have um, in regards to your emotions. Right. Because sometimes, you know, I'll look at my son when he's going through particular things in his life and I'll get, you know, really worked up about it and I'll feel really sad and, you know, I'll feel his pain. But really, if you are in an unhealthy relationship, you're probably not feeling anything. You've closed your heart. Right. Right. And so you have to kind of it, it does take a lot of work and it takes a lot of thought and process because you have to kind of then stand in the shoes of someone else and go, wait a minute, are they really feeling this or is this my story that I'm projecting on them? Right? Right. And so I, I also tend to try to look at things as it's not my place to stand in the way of somebody else's spiritual journey. So I can always plant seeds mm -hmm. and I can show them um, healthier ways to be. But when it comes down to it, we have free thought and we're going to right. choose the thoughts that match us. And it's really challenging as a parent to let go of that and watch them be on that path, whatever that path is, because who am I to say that if I step in too soon and tell them don't do this, or I try to remove the unhealthy substance, that might have been a significant turning point for them. They might have needed that. And that's really um, hard for a parent to do, is to right. allow a parent or allow a child to do something. And an adult child, you know, young kids, we can, you know, give them a hug and we can change things and we can protect them. But we can't protect our adult children. Right. We can show them different methods. We can give them different tools. 
But this is their path, and a lot of their path they're creating by the thoughts that they're choosing. Okay, so they, there is this part where when someone is in a is in a toxic relationship, like you said, mm -hmm. they probably have numbed themselves. But we know that in most cases, they are isolated or, or they isolate themselves emotionally. Yes. What tools are out there to help people maybe open up a bit or for them to know that this is what I need to access in order to... I think we need to be able to teach our children the difference between what is love and what is infatuation. And mm -hmm. sometimes we as adults don't even know that, right? Because if it's a loving, healthy relationship and somebody enters into your life, they're going to want to know about you as a person and everything in your world, okay? So if it's a man dating my daughter and it's a healthy relationship, they're going to want to know about the siblings, about the parents, about, you know, what makes this girl happy. And if it's a young boy or a man who's dating a woman, then it's also that woman should be saying like, well, I'm really excited. I want to know your mom. Let's go over and meet her. Let's do this and that. But when you're not seeing that, you need to point it out. And you need to point it out in such a way that you're not telling them what to do. You're not putting distance between the two of you, but you're giving them an insight so that they can question it in their own mind, so that they can listen and hear and you have to, from a young age, build a trust with your right. children. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I'll, I'll often, um, you know, in past relationships that my children have had, I've often said, well, you know, it's really interesting. I'm really proud of the fact that you are, you know, accepting this woman in your life. Okay? I'm really proud that... You know, you're getting to know the mom, if that's what is happening. Mm -hmm. But then I'll say um, something like, I'm really curious to know um, about the person that you're dating. You know, they haven't asked about your siblings. They haven't asked about, you know, your parents. Don't you think that they would want to do that? Don't, don't you want to share that with them and kind of see where they're at in those conversations? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think if somebody is with you, they want to know where you, at least where you came from, the, 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 the people who are important to you. Right. Because if they intend to be with you uh, for, for life, for example, they want to know who's going to be their relative. Yes. Um, and not just not just looking at it from the point of view as um, well they want to know who their relatives are going to be but does that person care about everything that you are and everything that you bring into the picture or is that person being kind of um, for lack of a better word selfish okay and there's the lack of the other perspective so I'm not asking about anything to do with your family. It's all about my family, right? And to show them what, what is healthy. And, you know, I hear this a lot from my friends who have adult children as well. And they'll say, I don't know what's with my daughter or my son. Um, they just agree to everything that the partner says because they were brought up to respect Right. And so they think that respect means I have to agree and make their life easy. You can agree to disagree and it's OK to find, you know, that push and pull in the relationship in a healthy way. You don't need to give away everything of who you are.
Um, I'm sorry, I've lost volume. I don't know what you're saying. I cannot hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. So absolutely, it it would be, I would find it so discouraging if I say something to someone and they say yes to everything. They also need to be a balance where they they, they say, oh, I disagree and these are my reasons why. This is how I see it and give you a different perspective. If it's a question of just saying yes to, to everything that I say, it means that there's no room for growth on my part. Right. Because, because everything that is happening is only limited to how I view things. But he also has his own perspective. He also has um, his own views as well as certain things that he knows that I don't know. So if I'm just to expect him to go, yes, 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 to everything, soon enough I'll get bored. Be because if there's no growth, it, it will start to be annoying. Because one will be wondering, okay, what, what do you bring to the table? I also need to benefit from learning from you. Well, yes, that, that's true. There's no growth and there's no growing. But also, if you have attracted somebody into your life that is functioning at unhealthy levels, what do they see from that picture? Mm. Power and control, right? And it's like, I get to be in charge. And before you know it, the other person has kind of been drawn in, sucked in, and their whole life is kind of gone. And they don't realize anymore that that's not love. That's mm -hmm. control in the name or in the disguise of being loved. Control and manipulation. Yes. So what sort of things do they kind of use to manipulate the other person? Um, well, things that... Um, people really care about if you're an unhealthy person in a relationship you are going to try to um, diminish the things that the partner really values in their life mm -hmm. okay you're going to try to take it away um, and then there becomes that um, abusive pattern of I'm just going to manipulate it a little bit. I'm going to try to make it sound like I want to do this. And then the, my partner will get really excited. And then just when they're excited and feeling happy, I'll take that experience mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So um, someone is saying here, what we need to list places where they can get help. Where okay. would well, it depends on on the ages of the children right but let's say you're in you you yourself are in a relationship with your partner and it didn't work out mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of different counseling agencies in each city that offer play therapy so the so the younger children can work this out there's lots of um, walk-in centers that offer counseling where you can go for counseling and a lot of um, counselors and therapists now are trained in very unique um, therapeutic modalities that help you think differently than just a traditional one-on-one -on -one counseling session. But having said that, even if you have your children in counseling, it still doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that they're going to choose the healthy pattern that they heard. It depends right. what the dominant thought or vibration is in their mind. But it's still important to instill counseling so that they always can hear that voice like, oh, right. well, yeah, this is what that person was talking about. So we need to plant those seeds and put those um, clues in there for people, right? Mm -hmm. Because, okay. yep. In, in my personal experience, like I had uh, an abusive husband. He was an alcoholic. Um, after that marriage, after I left that marriage, 
I put both of my kids in um, an, an Al-Anon for Kids program so that they would explain addictions um, to the children. And I also had them in play therapy programs right. where they had one-on-one -on -one time with a counselor and there was therapeutic playing that they did so that children could understand and establish a bond with somebody healthier and see what healthier reactions were, right? Mm -hmm. I also never um used the male my ex in any negative ways and i also i remember from a very early age because my children were four and two when i left my relationship was that you know he didn't really love himself mm -hmm. and you know it was a very unique program that the kids were in at that time and they talked about alcoholism as being like how a bee has to attach themselves to a flower and they can't let go of it. They're looking for that nectar, right? Mm -hmm. So even though my kids, um, I put them in counseling, I spent a lot of time just me and them and healing ourselves. My daughter later, I found her to be in a relationship that was very mimicking of the relationship that I had had with my ex. So even though I did a lot of talking and I put in um, different experiences, there were still very significant ones that she remembered, right? Mm -hmm. That I wouldn't have privilege to. But you have to look for those signs, you have to be aware, and you have to, you know, put as much seeds as you can in there. And sometimes you might actually have to say, look, um, I see a lot of patterns here that are unhealthy. Mm. Right? And I'm saying this because I care. And I realize that you have a choice and this is your learning, but I'm really concerned. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to have that talk. And that's when, you know, parents will start to feel guilty you know, well, I didn't do enough and it's all my fault. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I should have done more. And, you know, they, they feel bad for, you know, themselves in life. They feel bad for what their children went through. And so there's a vibration there then that sits in every conversation afterwards. Does that right. make sense? It does make sense. So I'm just wondering if the guilt is what would then prevent some parents from talking about it. I, I'm sure that that would be, you know, and parents carry a, around a lot of guilt that really isn't theirs to carry. Mm -hmm. They didn't do the abusing. And so, yes, you entered a relationship and you had children with that partner, but you weren't the one that was doing it. So if you carry guilt, you're still being a victim to that person. To the person who abused you. Yes. And so now the, the vicious cycle is that you're not supporting your children where they are right now, which is also a toxic relationship. Right. Right. And you have to keep saying, you know, like, I don't know what you remember as a child, but if this is what you saw, this is why mom or dad did A or B, you know, right. whether you're the single dad left with the children or if you're the single mom left with the children, you mm -hmm. still need to keep clarifying because in our adult minds, we don't stay as adults. We go back to the past as children. Right. So I was just wondering, you say that you are a hypnotherapist. Mm -hmm. And can you can you explain how that works? Because it, 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 I just wondered whether it is a technique that you can use on your own children. Um, only if they are willing to be a participant. So hypnotherapy with anybody, you can use it on anybody as much as they're willing to heal. Because right. not only do we get addicted to toxic relationships, we get addicted to our thoughts and the story that we have to keep telling over and over and over. Right. Okay. 
So hypnotherapy can take a person back to a situation where they how where they go to that situation simply as being an observer. There's no emotions left in the picture now. Right. Okay. And they're totally awake, just like we're talking right now but they're relaxed enough to see the picture as though it's a television screen and you turn down the dials of the emotion. So there's no emotion left. Now, what do you think is happening in that picture, right? Mm. And then they get their aha moments. But I also do use a lot of NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. So Neuro is your mind. The linguistics are what we saying and how the mind interprets that. And the programming is the behavior that comes from repeatedly telling ourselves one of those stories. Right. Okay. So there's different patterns of words that you can use. You can change the words, you can change the patterns, and you can show them how what you are thinking is creating your life. Right. And that your current life has everything to do with your own thoughts and what you're choosing to believe what if your story is not true mm. right then where are you at so most of us don't want to believe that our stories are not true no because that's our identity yeah and, and we hang on to that this is this defines who i am and if i let go of that then what and, you know, a lot of, of adults and adult children, um, they just so want somebody in their life that they're willing to settle. Right. Right. And even that, um, you know, earlier when I was talking about how we have unhealthy words mm -hmm. and we call like young men as being a mama's boy, right? We do this in, in lots of different ways. Um, with, with our girls, we tend to say, we tend to be more nurturing to them. And we take away the ability for a man to recognize that it's okay to have a thought and to feel and to care. Right. Okay. So, for example, um, when I was thinking about moving, to my current place of residence. So I'm currently living in Edmonton and I had moved from another city. I was saying, well, I'm really excited about moving, um, but uh, you know, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm going to miss my daughter because at that time she, had, she was an adult. She had entered into a relationship. Um, I thought she was gonna want to move, but of course she wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. and have this journey with in her relationship right she was an adult and i had to recognize right. that and i had to let her have that right but it was really interesting with her they would say things like oh well that's that's too bad but you know you guys are close you'll you'll keep keep talking and you'll be able to see her mm -hmm. and that was acceptable but uh, when I started saying things and I got curious and I thought, well, I'm going to see if I get the same Responding. opinions and responses if I say, well, I'm going to miss my son. He's staying mm. here. Oh, well, is there something wrong with him? No. Mm. Well, how old is he? Oh, 25. Oh, well, he's a man. Mm. So so there's, there are a lot of statements and innuendos there that make subconsciously men register it as saying that they should not speak when something negative is happening because they're supposed to be men they're supposed to handle it but yeah. you were talking about how you yourself were going to miss your son right it, it was in that you were implying that your son is not going to cope but you were saying, I'm going to miss my son. But but they tend to, it was twisted to mean that he can handle it. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and if somebody had had a conversation with him, he probably would have said, you know what, I'm just feeling 
uh, sad and strange because I'm not used to being too far away from my mom. I'm going right. to miss my mom. Yeah, and, and, and when society does that, this is when uh, I think it breaks the, the communication channels. Yes, especially especially if I've grown up hearing that I'm a mama's boy, and I still don't really know what that means, but I know it doesn't make me feel good. Right. Right? And so now yeah. I'm kind of stuck, and so I then choose to say nothing. And, 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 it, it, and it seems there is something positive about being called daddy's girl. Right. Yeah smiles i'm like that's a daddy's girl and even when the woman is married and they remain a daddy's girl and daddy can say oh that's my girl and everybody is okay with it but mama can just get get up and say that's my boy <laughs> it exactly. would be viewed in a bad negative way yeah and then what does that put on the parents Right. right. So now the parents have lost their voice and they don't know how to keep communicating with their children. Mm -hmm. Right. So now the whole family dynamics is is set. You know, there's so many holes in it. Right. And so we really have to allow everybody to have a voice and listen to who is speaking and and what is being said. And so we need to address the parent and saying, you know, it's really good that you, it sounds like you have a really healthy relationship and you're going to miss having that person in your life instead of, oh, well, he can handle it because now you've dismissed that person from wanting to maybe reach out to their adult children later and say, hey, how's it going, right? Because you're, you've been told this message now that you believe, well, he can handle it. He's a guy. And so then you talk to your female child. Right. Right. So I'm going to look at what um, the, our, our audience are saying here. I, it's a great topic, Kamala said. And um, she had wanted us to list where people can get help, which is what you addressed. And... Um, Rose, Rose is saying that um, she's a domestic violence counselor and life transformational coach and can help in the situation in this and break the cycle of abuse as well as help victims to heal and remove and move forward in their journey. And she also goes on to say, we're scared to face the truth about our lives, which yes. is, yeah. Yeah. And that, I get to that. Well, and that's a huge one because we're brought up thinking in polarities. There's right and there's wrong. Mm. Right. And there seems to be no allowance of having a middle ground. Well, I did that wrong. Like, no, you did what was best in the situation now, here's some other techniques you could try that could improve. But right. we have to get away from saying there's right and there's wrong. And we have to get away from overgeneralizing and saying like, and I hear this lots when I work with women who have been abused by a man. Well, mm. you can't trust any man. Oh. Right? <laughs> Well, then yeah. you're staying stuck in your story of being a victim. And that man that abused you, he's still abusing you in your mind because you're right. not letting go of it. Right? And yeah. often the abuse, it's, it's already done. They're, they're no longer in the picture, but we hold on to it. No movement. Stay stuck. No. Stay stuck. So. Yeah. Um, it's something that that I wanted to say and just just skipped my mind. Um, well, it should come back to you. <laughs> it will come back to me for sure. It yeah. will come back to me for sure. So um, I I was thinking that when there is when there is fear, the negative views that people have for the yeah, it's come back now 
for the the young man mm -hmm. who is in the relationship which is toxic or the young woman who is feeling that I cannot leave this relationship I cannot leave this marriage because what what would people say the mother might also think that way as well and it, it not just the mother it's some relatives and right. then instead of saying you know this is not working and you are not safe they would say what would people say if you walk out of your marriage what would people say if you walk out of this relationship because you walked out of another one before and so worrying about what people would say about you about your children is also keeping people in toxic relationships right um, I remember having a conversation with one relative of mine and I was telling them that their daughter was in a bad relationship and maybe they could consider having their daughter back. And they were saying, you know what, let, 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 let me just, before you go that far, let me remind you when she wanted to marry this guy, we told her that things were not gonna end, end well, mm -hmm. but she insisted right so my question to them was so what are you saying are you saying that she needs to stick with it because she made a wrong choice at the end of the day she is still your child right that person yes they were married but they're not related to you your re responsibility here yes she didn't she made a mistake she didn't listen to you she didn't heed anything that you said about that relationship being toxic right now we are here what do we do do we let her suffer because she made a wrong decision or we let her know that if it's unbearable where she is she can come home yes and it's important to to you know to tell anybody I think that's entering into a commitment, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know whether it's a, a formal marriage or it's a marriage with the justice of peace, or if it's just the thought of the marriage, right? Because yeah. there's so many different values and views we have around marriage. Is to say to them that materialistic things are always outweighed by your heart. Right. right and it's the human values that matter first yes so don't worry about the expense of the wedding the cost of the wedding or what are other people going to say because other people are not living in this relationship so what is it that you feel in your heart and really getting people to open their hearts and to think more with their hearts and less with their mind mm -hmm. right because it, it's also really interesting too. Um, like my daughter, for example, um, when she went through a relationship that wasn't healthy for her and she got out of it and she asked more questions about the seeds that I had planted, now she's more selective. But we don't allow our young women to be selective we say oh you must be too picky yes right and then we're disempowering them and so then we think well okay maybe i am being picky or maybe i should get married because all my friends are getting married but i really don't think i want to be married and so then we talk ourselves out of observing an unhealthy um characteristic in the next partner because then right. we think, oh well I'll downplay it a bit because um, I'm probably a little bit too picky, so I'll let that go. But the mm -hmm. thing that you're letting go could be the start of the toxic toxicity in your partner. That that is true because you're not you're not only letting your guard down, but you you have started by accepting something that you're not comfortable with. Yes. Yes, and, and that in itself is, is a breeding ground for everything that could go wrong. There won't be any connection and you're having your own internal dialogues about what you're not happy with in this relationship. 
And since everything is energy, maybe this person senses it too, that right. she, she doesn't like me that much anyway. And, you know, it just becomes complicated. And if we stay in the thoughts of what is not working, then we meet somebody and they're in that thought. You think, oh, this is a match because it feels comfortable. But feeling comfortable does not make it right or okay or healthy. Mm. Right? Mm. And so we take away their power unintentionally sometimes by not being more direct by saying well right. you know what um i'm glad you're really looking at things it's okay to be selective it's right. okay to know what you really want and to value yourself and to take time with knowing who you are right that is not said enough that mm -hmm. actually really needs to to replace you are too picky that statement there needs to replace the words you are too picky. Yeah. To, you know, to empower them instead of criticizing them for the standards maybe that you, you actually were responsible in installing in them. And then turn around and say you're too picky when you all their lives you have been telling them not to accept anything else but. Right certain things that are that are good you know yeah and yeah. We also, we're also really vague and loose with our words when it comes to relationships and we'll say well are you sure you love them well, what does that mean help me identify that <laughs> right yeah. oh yeah yeah i love them because you're not going to say well no i hate them <laughs> of course you can't say that and i i want to i'm just wondering you also have written a book on dementia for key for kids. Yes. Can you can you share because I would imagine that when somebody is deteriorating in health, there are abuses there that that happens. But can you explain how you came to decide that kids need an explanation or of what will be happening when someone is developing dementia? Well, when, um, when grandparents, let's just use the example of grandparents, maybe they're diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's, this is a time of disconnect. It's right. a dis-ease of disconnect. You're disconnected from who you are, right? And then the adult, you know, children who are left taking care of their parents are disconnected. And then we pass that down to our children, right? Well, what's the matter? Well, you know, they're just, they're not well. They, they forget things, right? And so kids just want to have a very specific answer. They need something concrete. Right. And I wrote the book for children so that they could be part of the family unit, so that the, the family unit could still have that sense of connection, mm -hmm. right? And because children are very intuitive and they understand a lot more than what we give them credit for. And mm -hmm. they're also ready to hear a lot more than what we give them credit for. So the book is very simple. And I compare the diagnosis to a traffic light because right. that's something that's very, um, uh, it, it's out there. It's very knowledgeable in the world with kids. And then I use a particular, a couple of pictures to show how the signal lights get crossed and how the messages get crossed up, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the end, um, the last page of the book, there's a song that children can sing to the grandparents because the only part of the brain that does not get affected by dementia or Alzheimer's is the part of the brain that response to music. Oh, okay. So it's a very simple tune. It, it's a song sung to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars. And I've had a lot of really good feedback. Like I wrote it for younger children, but I've had I've had parents of young children like who are 11, 12 saying, oh, well now I get it. 
And now the apprehension is taken away from talking to their grandparents and they still right. want to be there and have that phone call. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've even had some adults go, Oh, well, that makes sense. Amazing. Amazing. So if anybody wants to get hold of this book, where can they find it? Um, it's available for sale on my website, uh, which is echoofyes.com. And if you're in the Edmonton area, it's also available at Audrey's Bookstore. Right. So when we finish, you can type in the link in the thread where sure. people can find um, where can people can find you. And then okay. if anyone wants to talk to you about the services that you provide, where can they find you? Um, the, the same thing. I don't know. Can I type it in now in the chat room here? And type and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> if not, you can always uh, add it to the, to the thread. That's my email address. The, the video. Um, so if, if your viewers can see that. Uh, okay, I can't see it out here, but you can add it to the thread. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I also um, should have another children's book out this month, actually. And this children's book is to help kids with their self-esteem. That's a good one. Okay. And it's kind of telling the story of the power of the words I am and anything after that defines who you are. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's really good. We have an, a late, a, a comment here, which relates to the main discussion that we were having. Okay. Uh, I think feeling comfortable. This is from Kuda Kunze. This one is, she's my niece. Okay. Um, I think feeling comfortable with setting boundaries, this will help to set their standards without compromising. Absolutely. Yes, and really being able to know what emotions are yours and what emotions are, if we're talking about adult children, what emotions are theirs? Because right. really in order to be whole and complete and healed, we as an individual need to own all of our emotions. We need to have those missing links. Mm -hmm. If other people are carrying them, we're always going to go to other people to find parts of us that are missing when really it's always an inside job. You have to look inside. Right. And so therefore I don't have the right to carry my adult children's pain. I have the right to enjoy my life and be happy. Because if you're unhappy, if I'm an adult child and I'm unhappy and I'm the adult parent and I'm going, oh, gee, you know, my poor son, my poor daughter, I'm mirroring back to them how they feel. So why should I get out of that? Because my whole view around me is a mirror of being sad and hopeless. But if right. I'm like, well, okay, um, I'm really empathized with where you're at. This seems like a tough decision. And then you go off and you do your own thing and you're happy. Where are they going to gravitate to to get out of that boat that they're in? Well, look, she's happy and she's going to do this. And it did work. So they don't have to stay in those unhealthy emotions for long periods of time. But we forget that. We don't feel that we have the right to be happy in our life when somebody else is feeling opposite of us. Right. So what I'm getting is have a conversation, uh, plant the seeds yes. so that they'll be able to process whatever information you'll have given them. Just don't tire, continue to plant the seeds so that when they're on their own, they can use the tools that you are giving them. Yes, because when the time comes, they will hear you. When my daughter was in her relationship, I was continually planting seeds, like all the time, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but I allowed her her journey. 
and she learned from the journey, right? And when she needed to hear it, she heard it, and that empowered her to do it on her own, right? So now I have the strength on my own to leave and to recognize an unhealthy relationship. So now I also have the power and the strength and the knowledge to hear when other people are saying, well, you know what, you're being too picky. Uh, well, you know what, I'm not, I'm being selective because I didn't like this characteristic and I didn't like that characteristic, mm -hmm. right? And that empowers people and it gives them a voice, which is you know, why I really wanted to do this chat today is to start a dialogue and to give voice. And, you know, because I know as a parent, I've, you know, put myself in the long, oh, I feel so bad, or, you know, uh, oh, you know, and I start feeling all of this emotion. And a lot of the times I have to stop and go, okay, wait a minute. How much of this is my emotion from remembering my adult child when they were a kid and I didn't know the knowledge that mm. I have now. And it's like, okay, well, I don't want to carry all of this. I'm right. going to give some of it back, right? right? And it takes a lot of work and trust in yourself um, to do that, but it is extremely important to do it. Mm-hmm. So I, I noticed that you used to put a couple of, you were planting seeds, not just to people you know, but also to other people by making comments and posting posts on Facebook. And you've yes. had quite a lot of positive response from people who are in toxic relationships. Yes, I, I was um, having a lot, and I, I just post them randomly to give people a wake-up call because what wakes people up is wording that is in contrast to their current thoughts. So if we jump right. in their boat, I'm not going to hear you because you're speaking my language. Right. Right? I have to hear it a different way and go, wait a minute, what was that? That made sense. I think that's me. And it really got people thinking. I, I actually had commented on narcissism and mm -hmm. I got a messenger from a young man who's in another part of the world who was in a narcissistic relationship with another man. Right. And, and so I started having him just do simple things like, you know what, find every day, I want you to find evidence of three things examples of people being happy mm. and he's like oh that sounds cool i could do that right right yeah. and so giving giving somebody something to do makes it seem okay then to be happy yes right because he he's real really having a difficult time being in this same-sex relationship where his partner had seen a lot of abuse in his early childhood. Mm. And so they didn't know how to talk about it, right? So again, we're not talking to men and we're not allowing men to know that they have a right to talk mm. and that power can be very gentle and strong at the same time. Power does not have to be abusive. Right. Uh, I, I'm not going to add anything to that because it would take away from this strong statement that you have made there. Thank you so much, Lori, for taking time to talk to our audience and educate us, uh, share your information and knowledge on how to how parents can deal with um, toxic relationships. Yes, that, that the children are experiencing. Thank yes. you. Sorry, thank you so much. Uh, I think you know. Just to recap, it it means having the conversation, owning your own emotions and pain, and realizing that it's not your right to stand in anybody else's spiritual journey, because I'm sure there were times in our lives where people have stepped in and said, "Well, I don't know." 
right? But they still allowed you to find your way and mm. you still knew that they were going to be there to support you and they were proud of you no matter what. And there was going to be no judgment on how your relationship worked out. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, right. Thank you. So I, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope um, they can see how to reach me if they feel that they want to reach out. No problem. We can add, we can add the comment to to the video on Facebook. Okay, perfect. Find you. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Monica. You are welcome. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. bye everybody.